Welcome to Blockhouse Bay Baptist Church on the 29th of August, 2021. This is our second online gathering. Glad that you've joined us during this lockdown period. Today we're going to shift from our glimpsing of God in Genesis series to think more broadly about our major theme, Open Up Our Eyes, uh, where we seek to see the wonders of God and what he's to do with us. Have you ever been on a road trip? Ever been in the car when someone asks, how long? How long is it going to take till we get there? Where are we going anyways? Oh, that long? Those are typical questions of any car ride, especially of a road trip. This last summer, our family was able to enjoy a road trip along the South Island. And if we would have answered, where are we going? What's our final destination? We would have said, well... Auckland, because we started in Auckland and we ended in Auckland. But if we were to answer where are we going, we would have said we're actually on a road trip to stop at various places along the way. Some to see tourist sites, some to see nature, some to do hikes, some to camp out in interesting places, some to do adventure. There's numerous elements of our trip that we need to be able to do numerous activities and so our trip was not so much about the end point, but about the points along the way. Needing certain, being at certain places in order to enjoy certain activities, sights, sounds, experiences. Now, not everybody may be into road trips. But I do think about how long and how far and how long is this going to take and where are we going. I mean, that's a good question not only for road trips, but also about our current situation being in lockdown, how long is this going to take, what's the point, what's the purpose. But you could also ask it of the current discussion around the All Blacks about are they going to go to New Zealand, or not to New Zealand, but Australia to play. You could ask it about those players. Consider them about not only just in terms of whether they're going to go to Australia to play, but about week by week or day by day. Or they might ask themselves, how much longer is practice? What's the point of this? How long until we get there? What's there? Is it to the end of practice? Is it to the week end, the game? Is it to a tournament? Or the end of the season with a winning total? Or it's a winning tournament? Or a championship? Or a cup? The question of how long and where are we going and what are we doing are good questions that we should always be asking from time to time. Right? They should be regular things that we think about, and not only for road trips or rugby or lockdown, but actually of church in and of itself, too. Where are we going as a church, and what are we doing? How long is it going to take us to get there? And some of you might feel like, oh, where are we going in Genesis? Well, we're going to go through the end. Why are we doing this? So we can hear God more clearly. What's the end destination? Really, it is to know God more fully. Why? Well, as a church, remember, we're here to become Christ-like people of hope. That's our aim, our mission, is to become more like Jesus. And we are to be like Jesus in order to offer hope to the world that we live in. And we, we say that we're going to do that through these different categories of worship and connect and transformation and service. Those are the elements that we say are important to us. Well, how does that relate to road trips and rugby and lockdown? Well, let's think about this summer. We took a couple of good hikes. Well, if in our regular life, we as the Caps family were not regular people who got out, did walks, ran, did exercise, kept in shape, we would have not been able to enjoy some of those hikes that we were able to, to enjoy and then see the amazing scenery or the end result of them. We would have missed out by nature of not having done our regular fitness. Rugby players, if they aren't proficient at the numerous skills and technical abilities that are required of them as a player, they're not going to be playing on a team, much less the All Blacks. So if I was a really good rugby player, at least I talked about being a good rugby player, but I could and I could do a catch, and I could do a throw, and I could run my routes, but I didn't know how to tackle. 
I said I did, but I couldn't. Practice would demonstrate that I can't and therefore push me off the squad and I would not be playing. So I would not be proficient enough to play in the game, much less to win a cup, much less to win a trophy or to win a championship at the end of the season. So you recognize that there's a connection between games and cups or destinations and uh, places that we want to be and enjoy with the regular day activities that we do, the practices that we keep. We need to make sure that's very clear in our mind because as a church, that's also the case. We are asking where are we going and what are we doing and that requires uh, thinking on two levels. One is what is the big vision of where we want to be as a church? What are the big destination points? What are the games that we want to play in? And then what are the practices that we need to be proficient at in order to play those games? We need to make sure those two things are kept together in our minds and in our actions and our activities. So I invited you, we did, to read a couple of texts for this Sunday. Now you may have been like, ah, I didn't know that. So I'll give you a pause now to read Ephesians 4, 1 through 16. Ephesians 4, 1 through 16. And 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 21. Interesting texts, aren't they? What are they about? Are they about the big destination points, the big games and cups, or are they about the practices? They're a bit of both, aren't they? I just want to highlight a few things from the Ephesians text. One, Ephesians 1, or Ephesians 4, 1, talks about what? As a prisoner of the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling for which you've received. So each one of us, as a follower of Jesus, has been called to live a life that looks like his. That's Christ-likeness, right? Now, how does that come about? Well, each of them, in verse 7, has been given gifts as Christ apportioned, apportioned it. We've all been given gifts in order that we might live as God's people according to that call. Now, what are those gifts for? Verse 12 says, to equip his people. The gifts that you and I have given are part of our calling to live up to Jesus in Christ's likeness are to equip one another for the works of service. So we are called to be involved with each other in order that we might help equip each other for service. That sounds a lot like practice. Well, what's our practice entail? So we might be built up until we all reach unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. If you keep reading, then it's like, so we'll no longer be infants, blown by, by false teaching. But then instead of speaking truth and love, we'll be grown up into him who is the head, who we're, we're all supporting each other in love. So if we take this Ephesians text, we can realize that part of our practice is to be involved with each other in these different activities, right? Of knowing who Jesus is, being built up in the faith, being, speaking people of truth and love, these are all practices that sound a lot like worship. Knowing who God is more fully, knowing who Jesus is more fully, that's coming to an adoration sense of who God is and being in wonder and awe and directing our whole life in praise and worship of him, not only by words or by songs, but by action and a life of obedience. To do unity of faith and to build each other up, that means we need to be connected. We need to be involved in each other's lives. We cannot say that we're independent solo Christians. It does not work. Ephesians 4 basically says we must be involved in the unity of faith with each other, building each other up as part of the body. So we need to be connected. We cannot float out there and not be involved in some sort of growth group, in some sort of membership with us, in some sort of act of service involved with the church. We need to be doing that for the sake of the unity of our faith and believing together. But transformation, that means that we need to keep growing in our knowledge of who Jesus is, but also how we keep understanding who he is. So that's in prayer and spiritual disciplines in terms of fasting or reading the scripture um, or generosity or giving or silence. These are things that we've been talking about in our growth groups. These are things that are part of our transformation. But then, as you realize that we're not only just to do these things for us, it's supposed to send us out to serve, to serve not only one another, but also our community. Well, that's where we need to jump to 2 Corinthians, where it says, because we're new, because we have this calling, we have been 
reconciled to God through Christ, and he's giving us the ministry of reconciliation. That ministry of reconciliation is building bridges between God and other people, and that is our call. We are a church meant to be a people equipped, practice, practice about who God is, how we love each other, how we are transformed into Christ's likeness, how we have hope in order that we might serve in the world to be people of reconciliation, ambassadors for Christ. We are doing that every day that we're outside the church walls. So the church really is our practice field. It's our transformation station. It's our place of connecting with God and experiencing as a community. And it's also a place that sends us out to be a reconciling people, a people who offer hope for the benefit of Blockhouse Bay and beyond. That's our call. Now, those are all the practice realities. So every Sunday, every week, all these times that we gather together, these are practices that enable us, right, to enjoy the destinations of experiencing God in a more full way and being called by him to be creative in the engagement we have with the world around us, whether it's at work, whether it's at big functions of the church, or whether it's in our social communities, it's the practice that allows us, that makes us proficient, that makes us capable, that makes us able to know who God is, to be full of joy in what Christ has done for us, to be constantly amazed at Jesus and his work of redemption in our lives, to connect with one another and to be bound together by love and faith so that we can actually enjoy each other's company and also open up ourselves up to hearing somebody else's uh, challenge or critique or encouragement, we can actually accept each other's help. That is what it means to be connected. And transform, that means that we're not just stuck where we're at, but we're constantly growing and developing in our faith. That's that Koru idea, is that as we keep meeting together and practicing, we go deeper and deeper and deeper in our transformation to understand who God is and to worship Him and to enjoy Him and to be transformed by being like Christ. But all that sends us out, not only to serve with one another, but also to serve in the world that we live in. And so as a church then, if we're practicing these things on a regular basis, you can say, well, that's kind of boring. Well, you might say, yeah, but you're missing the point. Those regular practices are the exciting thing that allow us to really experience proficiently, in fullness, the God who loves us and redeems us and sends us out to be his people of hope. And so what are some of those big things that we want to be a people of hope about? What are some big things that we want to see? Well, one is that I think um, our church was begun a little bit over 100 years ago as a mission. We are to be a people who are for the benefit of our community. We're reaching out in order to let people know of the hope that we profess, that they might experience Jesus through us. And so we have made decisions along the way to send missionaries to support NZBMS, to hire a community pastor, to support uh, people from in our own church that go out. We're a people who are about mission, but we need to keep growing in our ability to do mission and do social justice, not just in support of it, but actually involved in our own lives on a regular basis. We need to keep growing in that as an identity marker for ourselves. And so in the next couple of years, we really want to figure out ways to be more equipped to be on mission as individuals and as a church for the good of our community. And that's exciting because that means that God will be working in us and serving as he calls us to do for the benefit of our community. But in that serving as a mission, right, our church long ago built a building. So we have a place, we have a, a belonging, a home that you could say where we can minister out of, but also that we come together to be transformed. Well, our building constantly needs effort and work and transformation of itself. It needs renovation. And so in the next number of years, we're going to have to make some serious decisions about how we retool our building for the purpose of being a place of hospitality for our neighbors to come in, but also as a transformation station to send us out. So how does our building serve the purposes of equipping us, helping us to meet God, but also a place of welcome and hospitality for our neighbors in order that they might come into our space and enjoy it for the benefit of the community. There's those two elements there. And lastly, as a church, we recognize that our community, this place that we belong, where we are on mission, is meant to reach out to our neighbors. Well, what we know in 
the Gospels. And what we know from Jesus, what we know from Ephesians 2, is that God has been working at reconciling all people to himself. Abraham was a blessing for all nations. And we know from Revelations that all tribes, tongues, and nations will come and be a part of God's kingdom come in the end. So that's on our doorstep, and we've talked about this before. And just to remind ourselves that we, as a church, need to keep adjusting our mission to reach out to our neighbors. And so we, as a church, will begin to look very different because our community is shifting, and we need to invite them in, and we need to go out and be hospitable to those who are our neighbors, those who are in our community. And so as a church, we will become more and more multiple ethnicities, multiple cultures, multiple dynamics in our service and our leadership. We are going to look different. We need to embrace that for the sake of God's kingdom because God is calling all people into himself. And wouldn't it be amazing to be on the front lines of welcoming the nations in? And our church is a place that's spearheading that. Those are the big games. Those are the destinations that we're going to work on in the next couple of years excitedly because that is where God is at work at in mission, in transforming us to be a people of hospitality, in the use of our gifts, as well as being a people of all tribes, tongues, and nations. The best thing about Jesus is he promises to be with us in practice and in the destinations. And so I look forward to knowing Jesus more with you as we seek to be a Christ-like people of hope for the benefit of our community. Looking forward to the future journey with you. Peace.